Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm just coming in, wishing everybody well. Also, I wanted to get into, I'm going into, like I told you guys, I've got a new, a new surroundings here. I done, you know, made my transition, and I'm able to go to a lot of places um, from the new spot, which a lot of stuff is new to me, y'all. I got a lot of stuff going on here. Anyway, uh, um, I have a lady that uh, basically, whoo reached out to me about a situation okay we're gonna get we're gonna start it like this there is families you know how when you grow up with people with your neighbors they're all neighbors and um just like i'll just say this main five they've all been you know friends for years i'm bending down picking up a carrier y'all i'm in this store called um oh that's not the one you can take there's no baskets i need one little basket I'm not paying attention here, and that one is stuck. Do they have any? Do you guys have any um, the carriers? The, yeah, there's none here. The little carriers. There's some right here. Okay. Thank you. Right but it's looking like we're from outer space today here. All right. Not, not too much customer service today, I guess, huh? That's good, because I'll give it to myself. Amen. Pat on the back. Now, so let me stop being silly. Anyway, um, there's families. Okay, so there's a set of, um, I'll say, five couples that have been knowing each other for years. And all of them have daughters around the same age from, like, you know, 12, 13, and 14 that have been basically born around the other, you know, the other families. And they all live in a cul-de-sac. And, um, you know, they're, everybody's, you know, pretty much living a good life. And they all have been close, connected, like family. I mean, real deal family. Godmothers to each other's kids and stuff like that. They consider themselves family without, you know, the bloodline, which that doesn't necessarily mean that you're family, if you know what I mean. Because I know better than that myself. You can form a family any kind of way, you know. Okay, so with that being said, all right. One, one of the one of the families had a sleepover, and when they had the sleepover, they had um, their daughter, and you know they got you know I believe some sons and stuff that you know live in the house, but they got um, the one daughter, and they invited four of the neighbors, which is all connected kids, you know, to spend the night, which was all for the girls' sleepover. Anyway, the wife had to work that night, so. She left to go to work 11 to 7. So when she left, um, you know, they were staying up late, hanging out, all the girls, popcorn, all that. The father was sat chaperoning it. And um, one of the younger boys was home. And um, the other son was out at somebody else's house. So basically what happened was um, they had to sleep over and the father, you know, was chaperoning and everything. And, you know, he let the girls do the stuff that they like to do, you know, stay up late snack, watch movies, talk, laugh, and hang out and have fun, and that's pretty much what they were doing. They were having a good time and, um, you know, watching movies, and the father was supervising, like he was going in there to make sure, you know, they were doing what they were supposed to do, then he would go back up, and then they all, you know, wanted to watch a movie, so he, you know, they had um, went out and grabbed a rental movie or whatever, and he got them situated in the living room, and then he just went on his um, regular um, daily things. I mean, daily things, or, you know, the stuff that he normally does. And everything went pretty good. You know, it was the next day. And um, his daughter, including the um, four other girls, got up. You know, and they had all camped out in the living room on the floor and fe passed out and fell asleep. So basically, that went well. And then the next morning... They basically, everybody got up, you know, big enough. I think one of the girls, the youngest ones, were like 12 years old. And we're talking about um, four to five girls here. And, you know, they basically live right next door to each other, if you know what I mean, right on the same street and everything. So when they got up to go home, one of the girls, she was kind of slow to get up. And they, all the other girls were trying to wake her up. And she, you know, wouldn't wake up. And, the, you know, the father kept trying to wake her up. And they had a hard time. She got up. She was still groggy. By this time, you know, the mother had, um, you know, came home from work that morning, and she went in to um, 
you know, to say how, you know, hey, what's up? How'd it go? You guys had a good sleepover? Did y'all watch the movie? How was it? Blah, blah, blah. Got a couple of more days on the movie, so I'm going to watch it myself. And, you know, everything went good. And the one girl still was just kind of sitting around, kind of out of it and down feeling and whatever. And she said her stomach was hurting. So she said, well, let me give you some um, Pepto-Bismol and, you know, some Sprite or something. You know, you hadn't ate breakfast yet. And she said she didn't want nothing to eat. So she said, well, let me give you something to settle your stomach. So they gave her something, the mother gave her something, which, you know, the mother that came home from work that, the, you know, all the kids was at their house. So she gave her something for her stomach and she said she still wasn't feeling good. So she said, well, do you want me to bring you home or what do you want to do? Because you probably got a stomach ache. It'll take a minute for, you know, everything to set in. And she said, um, I want to call my mom. And she said, I got to go to the bathroom. And she said, well, maybe if you go in the bathroom and, you know, you, you know, do a number two, that might make you feel good because you guys ate a lot of junk last night. So that's what they were looking at. So when the girl went in the bathroom, she didn't come back out. So the lady went in the bathroom, knocked on the bathroom door and asked her, was she OK? She came out with her head down and she hardly wouldn't talk. And she said, my stomach is hurting really bad. So she, you know, she said, um, you know, she told her, she said, well, OK, sit down. Then you want me to just, you know, bring you home. She said, I can't walk. I don't feel like I can walk. So she said, OK, I'll tell you what, we'll get in the car and I'll run you, you know, look, two houses down. However you want me to do it, carry you. I have Mark carry you or whatever. No, no, I don't want him. You know, I don't want him to carry me. I don't want him to carry me. His name is not Mark. I just say um, Mike, the husband. She said, Mike, I have Mike carry you. She said, no, just call my mom. And, you know, she didn't want to come out the bathroom. So her mother came and got her. And she was like, she had a stomach ache. And I gave her some, you know, Pepto-Bismol and... You know, she said she couldn't walk, and Mark offered to carry her, but she seemed like she didn't want no parts of him, and her stomach's bothering her, so we thought she'd use the bathroom and be fine. So she says, okay, fine, did you guys have a good time, and was she behaving, and everything, yeah, 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 everything went good. So they got, she got home with her daughter, and her daughter, you know, wouldn't talk, and she was all, you know, bottled up, and she went inside the bathroom, and she went in the bathroom, and she stayed in there for a while, and you know how when you go into the bathroom, sometimes you have your, you know, shoes in the bathroom and you know how your pants come down to your, um, you know, can come down to your ankle or down, you know, to your knees. Her mother came in the bathroom to check on her because she was in there for a long time. And she said, she was looking at her daughter and she said, you got um, something, you know, a stain in your underwear. And she said, when the mother said when she looked closer, there was a blood stain in her underwear. So she thought the problem with her stomach and all that was tied into her starting her menstrual cycle. But the thing is, you know, the daughter wouldn't let the mother touch her. And she said, you might have started your cycle. We got to get you cleaned up. And, you know, I got some pads here. And, you know, we'll make an appointment with the gynecologist, you know, to see what's going on now. You know, your doctor, pediatrician, however, because things do change, you know. And sometimes you may want to see a gynecologist or your regular pediatrician still deals with girls, you know, even though they start their menstrual because there's not really no required exam down there. But the problem is... The blood was in the back part of her underwear. And she was like thinking maybe because of the way the girl was sitting. So she says, well, you know, you take some wipes and clean yourself up. But every time she would wipe in the front, there was no type of blood at all. But there was blood anally. And that's where she, you know, she started talking and saying that she was having problems back there. So they were all mixed up and confused. And she asked, what was going on? What did you do? Did you eat it? You know, so-and-so, you know, the Mike and them, did their older son get fresh with you? Anything happened that I should know about? And she said, no, ma, nothing happened. We all watched the movies and everything and everything went fine. So basically she took her daughter to the emergency room. And when she took her daughter to the emergency room, they said that she was hemorrhaging anally and that she had been penetrated. And they also found some semen. During further examination, they found out that the girl, you know, had basically been drugged and raped. So then this starts a whole investigation of where she was spending the night at, whose house they was at, you know, who all was there. So number one, the older brother wasn't home because he was sleeping out somewhere. The girls, you know, they didn't say if they were fooling around with each other in any kind of way because all those questions was asked. None of that happened. So then they, you know, the younger brother was only like three years old. So you know that he don't know anything. He couldn't have done anything. So, you know, they kept saying, well, we're going to have to do some, you know, DNA tests because then they got really, you know, in an uproar. Everybody was angry. What happened to my daughter? Who did y'all have over here? And basically, Michael was saying that it was just me and the four girls and, you know, including his daughter made five. 
And, and you know, my little son is three and there's nobody else in the house because the older son spent the night out. So he's the only grown up there. And the girls were saying that they weren't fooling around with each other in any kind of way, experimenting, don't know the sexuality. It was nothing like that. And they found, you know, they, you know, when they did the cultures, it came back for, you know, you know, positive for semen. And it was male semen and not female. And the oldest son wasn't home. The little boy was too little. And she didn't do anything to the little boy. Because, you know, there's a lot of sick stuff happening out here, y'all. Believe me. I, well, I know y'all know. It's not just on the news. It's work you do, travels, and people you know. Anyway, with that being said, they, um, you know, you know, started getting the, you know, the reports back or whatever. And she had to have a little bit of um, surgical, you know, procedure done there because um, she was torn back there. So they had to, you know, do, stitch her up and, you know, clean her out and, you know, you know, get her straightened out and... Basically, you know, the police ended up going to the neighbor's house and said that we're going to have to have a DNA test performed on, you know, you know, the male, the males in the house, even, the, the, you know, everybody in the house. So that consisted of even though the brother wasn't home, did he come back home in the middle of the night? It just was hell. So basically, they, they took um, a sample, you know, from the father. And, you know, the oldest son, obviously, he was home and stuff by this time because, you know, we got days and stuff passing and lab, you know, lab work coming back and all of that. And they basically, it came back to um, the semen was a match to the father. And what he did was he had some type of um, sleep medication that he was taking. And he basically um, had, when he had made, you know, made all the girls some drinks he had put something in that girl's drinks, you know, so that, you know, that she was, hello, how are you? How are you? <laughs> Very good, thank you. <laughs> so what he had did was um, everybody passed out, but he had put something in her drink, and it was some type of med some type of sleep medication that he was on, something heavy duty, and she ended up, you know, passing out where she was out of it. So you imagine a child taking a grown-up person's dose of sleep medication. And uh, I'm assuming that he must have removed her from being on the floor with the other girls because they weren't, you know, on any type of medication. They would just sleep. And he had um, sexually assaulted her. And it all finally came out. And basically his wife is sticking by him. And she said that she don't believe it. She don't care about what the test, the results are, that he didn't do it. He's not like that. And they told her that if she sticks with him, that um, they're going to remove her kids from the home and all that type of stuff, which they end up taking um, their three kids. And this lady has decided to stay with her husband with the evidence that's unfutable. There was no, no doubt at all that it was him because it was his semen. His semen. It matched his semen. They took hair. And even with the older brother, there was no match. And plus, he wasn't home. And like they said, he could have came home in the middle of the night. And you know how kids are, teenagers. But that wasn't the case. It was a match to the father's semen. And he had drugged that child. And it tested back to the medication that, you know, because they went through their whole house. The medication that he was taking. There's nobody else that she's around that takes the medication. All the other family members that she grew up with and friends and stuff that she has at school. There was nobody because they went, you know, they went where she was at first and got all the answers before they had to go further out saying, you know, maybe something happened in school a couple of weeks ago and she's just now hemorrhaging. I mean, they went all the way through it. So this woman is with her husband and she wants to know that she, she stick by him. And, and lose her kids, you know, <laughs> basically permanently, because if she don't separate from him, she can't get her kids back. And she wants to know, should she stick by her husband or should she, um, you know, get her kids and move on? And I'm going to be honest with you. This guy is, to me, he's got a problem and he's ill. He's a sick guy and ain't no man come before my children, man, woman, and number one, Kids don't come or anybody before God. So my advice to this lady was you have to tend to your kids. And if he has that type of sickness in him, how, how can you even question what to do? I know it's a shock and everything, but over your own children and then that that child has been hurt. So the whole crowd, you know, nobody is wanting to have anything to do with her because of the fact that she is allowing this man to stay in the home knowing what he did to the child, you know. To somebody else's child, so everybody, you know, they're they're done. The whole that whole Kovacat crowd has turned against this whole family entirely, and she's decided to stay with him, and and, and they've removed her children.
So she wants to know, should she stay with them? And I'm not trying to be the judge and jury because I don't get in people's business, but that's a definitely, there's no, no question about that. They proved it beyond a reasonable doubt. There was nothing. This child has um, been hemorrhaging. You understand what I'm saying? Bleeding. His semen was found there. It was a match. His medication, all of it. So it's over. As far as that's concerned, your, your kids come before any man. You understand? And if you know that this man sexually assaulted a child and they found semen in this child, it's over. There's no, oh, they took my kids and I'm staying with him. Then you know what? Y'all ride out with the sickness together. I feel that it's over. And, you know, and that's all I could say. I'm just so overwhelmed with this that I, I, I'm just like, you know, bugging out because I just got this and I had to get on here and talk to you guys about this because she called me and asked me, should she stay with this man? You know, and I'm just saying there's a contact thing where we do this, um, you know, people DM you or whatever have you. And I told her absolutely not. And he needs to get himself in treatment. Because he set that up and he planned that and he picked which one of the girls. Also, their kids have to be examined as well to see if he might have been doing something to his daughter all along or even um, the boys or whatever. And I guess he thought if he, you know, went to the back door that it would never be known. And see, she didn't remember because um, she was knocked out cold on some heavy duty um, sleep medication. So, no, it's a wrap. That's all I got to say, y'all. And um, I just feel like ugh, right now and... You know, I feel sorry whoever got this sickness or whatever you want to call it, but it's a wrap. I'm out of here, y'all. Have a good one. Bye-bye.